Mo Bassi back at it again. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the 17 mindset truths that will double your income this year. These are things that I've learned over the last few years of spending over $200,000 working with top level people, top level performers, top level coaches, and learning the psychology behind what produces results, not just within your finances and business, but also just in life in general. So let's start off with number one, selling someone a $3,000 package versus a $10,000 package is the exact same. The only difference is the quality of customer. What I've figured out, I've sold as low as $500 all the way up to $25,000 throughout my years of business. And what I figured out is that you will get the same objections no matter the price point. But oftentimes, the people who are willing to pay the least will have the most objections. They will require the most support. They'll have the most complaints, whereas people who are spending more money will require less support. They're very direct to the point. They're a lot more committed to the process, so they actually do the work and therefore get better results. Number two, you will always fall to your standards and not rise to your aspirations. This was something that I learned from my very first mentor, Brandon Carter. And he always told me, if I'm not getting results within my business, if I'm not getting results within my life, anything that I wanted to achieve, it's because it wasn't a standard in my life. It was just something that I aspire to one day have. Whereas when you have it as a standard, it's a non negotiable. It's a must on a daily basis with the activities that produce results, which you will eventually get to. Number three, your identity will always bring your income back down to subconsciously what you believe you're worth. And you see this all the time. You know, people will make 20K, 30K, even 100K in one month. But then all of a sudden, what happens the next month? It goes really, really low. They take the gas off the pedal. They stop doing the work. They get comfortable. And then it gets to such a low point that they say, you know what? I need to start working again. And they work again and they get it to a high point. And then it goes down to this low point. This is the entrepreneurial hell where they're constantly going up and down. And their average, if you really average out their year within their results in their business, but also their personal life, it's what they believe they're actually worth. When they're at a high point, they don't believe they're actually worth that. So subconsciously, they do things to self-sabotage it and bring it down to a low point so that they can average out to what they believe they're worth. So if you want to have exceptional results in business or your finances or your body or your relationships, you're going to have to subconsciously work on what you think you are worth. There's a good show out there called Undercover Billionaire. And what they do is they put these people who are billionaires and millionaires out in the middle of nowhere and they tell them, look, you have this amount of time to make this amount of money with no resources, no connections. And what tends to happen is they get to that goal or at least very close to it because, again, their identity is attached to that goal. Number four, less anxiety and stress equals more flow and output, which equals more money. When you are in a state of anxiety and stress, you're essentially in a state of fight, flight, or freeze. These states will not allow you to be free-flowing. These states will not allow you to be able to be very focused and be able to produce the results that you want in your life because you're constantly overthinking, you're constantly in your head, you're in a state of panic. So if you can lower your stress response, if you can lower your anxiety response, you'll be able to put yourself in a flow of productivity much more often. Number five is go on thinking walks often. It will allow you to innovate and be creative. Some of the best ideas for videos within my business, uh, within my life in general, that I've had has been when I've been walking, going on hikes in nature, because you're just getting the body moving, you're getting the head flowing, and you don't have any distractions. This is something that I regularly do to be able to actually come out of my problems in my life or in my business. Number six is they don't pay you for your content. They pay you for your coaching or services. I often work with a lot of coaches who hold back on their best content. They say, you know what? 
my best content has to only be in my members area. So I'll give them the what, but not the how. This is coming from a scarcity mindset, thinking that you can't innovate and create more content or create better ideas. If you want to operate from a state of abundance, you're going to give your best stuff away for free. Because one, when you give away your best stuff for free, you start to actually innovate more processes. You start to innovate better content for your paid stuff. But also, it's coming from the belief that people are paying you for your products and for videos, which is not true. People pay you for accountability. People pay you to be held accountable to a certain process. People pay you to have you as a coach who can customize things. So give away not only the what, but also give away your how. Give away the stuff that's actually in your program or in your coaching right now, and you will be a lot more successful. Number seven is that volume in everything will negate luck. This is something that Alex Hormozzi talks about often, and I highly believe in. If you're able to create more content, if you're able to reach out to more people, if you're able to get on more phone calls, you will make more money. So the the idea that you don't have enough information is complete BS. You have enough information. You need to put yourself more out there and get on phone calls, reach out to people, create the content that you need to create to be able to create a difference. If you've been seeing my YouTube, my TikTok, my Instagram, my Facebook, my email list, I've been very, very consistent with my content over the years. Of course, with the YouTube channel, there was a little bit of a fallout because I was shadow banned. But even now that I'm able to actually produce content, I'm searchable on YouTube, I have been very consistent, whether it's shorts, whether it's videos like this, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, you want to get yourself out there, especially if you have a coaching business. If you don't, if you have any other businesses, it still applies. You want to get out there more. You want to talk to more people. You want to network. You want to hop on more phone calls, and this will allow you to produce higher results. Number eight, if you're not having fun, you're in a state of resistance and resistance equals lower income. At the end of the day, what the uh, state of flow is, is that you're essentially having fun. You're enjoying the process. And if you come into every activity within your business or within your life, coming from a place of frustration, coming from a place of, oh, I have to do this and I have to push myself to do it. It is a state of resistance and you're not going to do it at a high level to actually produce results. So take some time. I've actually created a video on this on how to overcome procrastination, getting rid of states of resistance. Go and watch that. Uh, I'll leave the link down below or something, or you can just go on my videos and watch that so that you can overcome this state of resistance. Number nine, your performance is the root of the tree and everything else your business and life is built on. If you ignore your performance, the tree is going to fall. This is what happened to me when I built my first two businesses. I made a ton of money. And then all of a sudden, I found myself waking up with anxiety. I had panic attacks that led me to the hospital. I had tons of bad addictions like drinking, smoking, uh, sleeping late, waking up late, scrolling on social media because the performance wasn't there to begin with. My mindset was not honed for success. I was just randomly doing some stuff and it ended up working. So you want to focus on the roots of the tree, which is going to be who you are, your identity, your performance on a daily basis. And when you start to actually grow that tree, it's going to last. Which brings me to my next point is you want to cover the basics. Okay, there are seven basics within performance. You want to get daily sunlight. You want to get fresh air. You want to exercise regularly. You want to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. Okay, something that's going to make you feel good, such as the paleo diet. You want to get enough hydration. You want to drink enough water and stop drinking sugary crap. You want to get social connection. You want to get good sleep, okay, which is very, very important. Okay, These things are what's going to allow you to have the basics of high energy. And if you don't have these things, what you can do on a weekly basis is list down these seven things and go through them based on my week. How many of these things were there seven days of the week? And if it's not there, you improve on it the next week and so on and after. Number 11, if others are doing better than you with the same information, the problem isn't the tactics. The problem isn't the information. It's you. 
Okay. Your performance is just not at that level to be able to sustain results or get results in the first place. You're not doing it consistently. You're jumping from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And because of this inconsistency in this shiny object syndrome, you're not able to produce the results that you actually want. Next up, reading books, meditation, and gratitude are incredible tools. I love these tools. However, it will not solve your traumas, your anxiety, your limiting beliefs, the things that are at your root core. Okay, that takes deep work. I've spent over $200,000 learning how to overcome those things. And it wasn't through reading books. It wasn't through meditation and gratitude. Those tools are tools that kind of come on later on as you've set the foundation first. Number 13, it's not the hours of work that you complete, but the effectiveness of the hours you put in. You want quality over quantity. And this is something that I had a really hard time with. I used to try to slam as many hours of work in as possible, you know, try to do the 16 hour days and the 14 hour days. And what I realized is that most of that time I was wasting time anyways, okay, because I had overworked myself. And then I didn't have any time to actually recharge my batteries. So that the next day, even though I had a 12 hour day, a 14 hour day, a 16 hour day, it wasn't effective. I wasn't actually getting much done. And I noticed that my to-do list was the same to-do list week after week after week. So if you want to overcome this, you have to make sure that your hours are actually effective. Now, at this point, I work anywhere from four to eight hours a day. And I try to keep it around that six, four to six hour uh, mark, because this is usually when you are going to be the most effective. Those are actual effective deep work hours. Anything that goes past around eight hours, you'll usually not doing deep work. Number 14, sell, sell, sell. Daily, you have to love and become a salesperson. At the end of the day, all of us are trying to either sell an idea, sell a product, sell a service, sell who we are as people. If you don't even have a coaching business or a business in general, you want to get a job, you have to sell yourself and you have to learn how to become a master at communication, persuasion, and selling, regardless of who you are and regardless of what you do. Number 15, that next mastermind that you're thinking of, Facebook ads mastermind and lead gen mastermind and real estate mastermind, it's not going to teach you anything you don't know, okay? Most of the time, the information is already out there. A lot of times, it is a tactical issue. It, it is an issue of, I don't have the information. But you can get the information for free. There is books, there is DVDs, there's programs, there's courses, and there's mentors. But if you've been part of these things before, then it's not lack of information and you need to dig deeper. You need to go personal. You need to figure out what is going wrong and right in my life that's leading to a lack of performance and a lack of results in whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Number 16, your environment and the people that are around you, your influences will determine your beliefs. If they are determining your beliefs, they're going to determine how you think. And if they're determining how you think, they're going to determine how you emotionally feel on a moment-to-moment -moment and day-to-day -day basis. And dependent on your emotions, your actions or lack thereof will be from that. Okay, If you're not taking action or doing actions that are outside of who you want to become or your vision or your values or your standards and boundaries... It is usually because and stemming from your environment or your influences. So fix those first. And last but not least, number 17, focus on incremental but fast progress, okay? Not perfection. A lot of people go too slow because they're trying to perfect everything. Stop trying to be perfect. You just need a 1%, 5%, 10% improvement. But as long as you are moving fast, that's what matters because with speed and with failures, which is non-perfection, you will have lessons and lessons is what equals progress. So hopefully these 17 lessons helped you out. I'm going to leave them here on this page for you for a few seconds if you want to screenshot it. So do that now.
And if this helped you out, make sure to click that subscribe button, comment down your thoughts below or any video suggestions, and definitely give this a thumbs up to push more videos out like this. And I hope to talk to you soon. Take care.